Shalom Israel, this is Bishop Nathaniel. The Israelites have been scattered across the four corners of the earth, as prophesied in Deuteronomy, the 20th chapter. Here in Israel, united in Christ, we need your help to recover the remnant of our people, teach them the gospel. Please help us, support us, and join or donate to the Booster Club today. Shalom. All right, so the first question is, um, what is the difference between Luke 9 and 49 and Matthew 7 and 23? Okay, so let's, um, let's read Matthew 7 and 22 and 23 real quick. Let's read that first. This is the book of Matthew, chapter 7 and verse 22. All right, everybody, make sure you get out your Bibles your notebooks, your pens, your apocryphas, highlighters, all right? And let's take notes. Let's take notes. All right, Matthew 7 and 22. Read that. Matthew chapter 7 and verse 22. Come on. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? Mm -hmm. And in thy name have cast out devils? And in thy name done many wonderful works? Mm -hmm. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. All right, so the scripture says that uh, certain people will be prophesying in his name. All right, but in this particular verse, it says that he is going to cast them away. All right, now let's go to Luke 9 and 49. Luke 9 and 49. This is the book of Luke. Chapter 9 and verse 49. Come on. And John answered and said, Master, we saw one casting out devils in thy name. Mm -hmm. And we forbade him. And they did what? And we forbade him mm -hmm. because he followed not with us. All right. So the disciples saw someone preaching in the name of Christ, but they didn't walk with the 12. So they was like, nah, you can't do that. Stop. Read on. Verse 50. Come on. And Jesus said unto him, mm -hmm. forbid him not. Do what? Forbid him not. But Christ said, don't forbid him. Read. For he that is not against us is for us. All right. So there's two instances. Both of them prophesying in the name of Christ. One instance, it says that he's going to cast him away. And the other instance says that uh, Christ says to leave him alone. All right, so let's get the understanding thereof. Uh, for, go to Philippians 1. All right, we're going to go to a few precepts. Philippians chapter 1. Hey, hold that. Give me Matthew 12 and 30. All right, hold Philippians 1, and then give me Matthew 12 and 30. All right, read the one in Matthew real quick. The book of Matthew, chapter 12 and verse 30. All right, wait till everybody get it. Matthew 12 and 30, then we're going to Philippians chapter 1 and verse 15. All right, read that. Matthew chapter 12 and verse 30. Come on. He that is not with me is against me. All right, you see that? It says, he that is not with me is against me. All right, watch this. Now let's read Philippians 1 and 15. The book of Philippians, chapter 1 and verse 15. Mm -hmm. Some indeed preach Christ, even of envy and strife. Okay, who can break that down? Uh, Brother Yeshea, is there a mic in the audience? Can you read that again for me? Philippians, 
chapter 1 and verse 15. Mm -hmm. Some indeed preach Christ even of envy and strife. All right, shalom, leadership. Um, shalom, shalom. So it's saying that um, some people, they, they preach Christ, they preach the laws, but they not sincere with it. You know, they have envy and strife, and they really have an ulterior motive. Can we get an example? Um, like uh, with Bezalel's situation, how he was amongst the body of lungs, you know what I mean, everybody for all these years, and he was preaching the laws of God, but at the end he turned out, you know what I'm saying, he, you know, cast us down. He said we are a hate group, you know what I mean, amongst the enemies. Okay. So, um, yeah, good, good, good. Anybody got another example? Uh, uh, Eliezer. Shalom, leadership. Shalom. So um, when it goes into um, some um, people teach Christ and deal with envy and strife, that's going into certain camps that they do talk about the scriptures and Jesus Christ being a black man and Israelite and who we are as a people. Mm -hmm. But they also go, they're combative when they teach in the scriptures. They um, get into um, arguments and contention with people over like stuff like Esau is the devil and things of that sort. Right. Very good. Go to, um, go to Isaiah 52 real quick. Isaiah 52 and 8. All right, going to, and, uh, to what uh, Brother Eliezer just said. All right, because think about it. If, you of, if you're of Christ, you're going to understand certain things in these scriptures. You feel what I'm saying? If other people are preaching Christ, all right, let them preach it. You understand? You're not going to have a problem with it, okay? Um, that's what I want, right? Isaiah 52 and 8. Got it? Yes, sir. All right, read it. Isaiah chapter 52 and verse 8. Mm -hmm. Thy watchmen shall lift up the voice. Mm -hmm. With the voice together shall they sing. Okay. It says, Thy watchmen shall lift up the voice. Who are the watchmen, brothers? Uh, be more specific. Yeah, be more specific. Think about in today's uh, day and age. Uh, make it more. I mean, yeah, yeah, the teachers. Yeah, y'all definitely right. But think about it like this camps. Camps, that's what we call them today. As I say, today, in, in this day and age, all right, we call them camps, right? All right, read it again. Isaiah 52 and verse 8. Come on. Thy watchmen shall lift up the voice. With the voice together shall they sing. Uh-huh, together, that's going into what? We're prophesying out on the streets, what? The words of Christ, this Bible, okay? Read on. For they shall see eye to eye. They shall what? See eye to eye. Uh-huh. When the Lord shall bring again Zion. Uh, did the Lord bring Zion yet? Yes, no, no, no. So are, is, is every camp going to see eye to eye right now? Yes, mm -mm, not at all. So let's go back to Philippians uh, 1 and 15. This is going into the question showing the, um, the difference between the two. All right, read that. Philippians chapter 1 and verse 15. Philippians chapter 1 and verse 15. Come on. Some indeed preach Christ even of envy and strife. So you still, you're going to have some camps out there teaching Christ of envy and strife. Now, go back to Matthew 7 and 22 real quick. Because it ain't talking about the Christian church. That's what I used to think back in the day when I first came in. I said, oh, that's Christian church. Christian church ain't casting out no devils. <laughs> they'll, they'll, what they're doing in there is summoning up evil spirits. They ain't casting out no devils. We're the only ones that can do that. Uh, speaking of that, give me um, John chapter 14 real quick. Uh, give me John chapter 14, verse... Start at 10, read down to 12. The book of John chapter 14 and verse 10. Wait till everybody get it. All right, read that. John chapter 14 and verse 10. Mm-hmm. Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? Mm -hmm. The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me. Mm -hmm. He doeth the works. Come on. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me. Or else believe me for the very works sake. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me. The works that I do shall he do also. Mm -hmm. The greater works than these shall he do. It says even greater works we shall do than Christ. I say even greater works. All right. Think about in today's 
That's actually prophesied to our generation, okay? I think I was going over with uh, one of the brothers last night. During Christ's time, did the nation of Israel know their nationality? Yes, they did. So you got to understand, Christ said we would do the same thing, but now how are we doing it? We're doing it greater, but we're healing people with the word of God. No longer is it the laying on hands because that time has passed away. Now we're doing what? We're teaching the word of God and people are what? Remembering who they are. I don't know if y'all know, but that's a miracle. <laughs> y'all don't get that. Y'all just think that, oh, I understand. No, 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 no. If you grew up as an African-American, an Hispanic, um, a Jamaican, and then one day you hear some Bible verses and now I'm not an African-American. I'm not a Jamaican. That is a miracle, brothers and sisters. I got to understand that thing. Read verse 12 again. Verse 12. Come on. Verily, verily, I say unto you, mm -hmm. he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also. Come on. And greater works than these shall he do. Those are those greater, greater works. Now, read that in Matthew uh, 7, 22. Watch this. Matthew chapter 7 and verse 22. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? Come on. And in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works. Mm -hmm. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Let's get an example of that. Uh, Acts chapter 19. Let's get an example of that. Watch this. Acts chapter 19 in verse... 13. Acts chapter 19 and verse 13. Mm -hmm. Then certain of the vagabond Jews. The what? Vagabond Jews. The bomb Jews. The bomb Jews. Yeah, I, am I, could I relate it to today? I don't even want to because honestly, hey, I ain't worried about you. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? All I'm, all I'm worried about is the restoration of God's people. That's all we worried about. All right, read it again. Verse 13. Come on. Then certain of the vagabond Jews, mm -hmm. exorcists, Read. took upon them to call over them which had evil spirits the name of the Lord Jesus. You see that? You had brothers who were bum Jews using witchcraft trying to do what? Cast out devils in the name of who? Oh, gosh. Brothers, is this, is this thing on? Cast out devils in the name of who? Right. right, right. So what does this sound like? Didn't we just read it? Matthew 7, 22, right? All right, read this again. Verse 13. Come on. Then certain of the vagabond Jews, exorcists, took upon them to call over them which had evil spirits, the name of the Lord Jesus, mm -hmm. saying, we adjure you by Jesus, whom Paul preaches. So you had Paul and the apostles preaching Christ, right? Now you had these other groups of bum Jews doing the same thing. So it's like, hey, we pushing the same thing they teaching, right? Read on. Verse 14. Come on. And there were, were seven sons of one Sceva, a Jew, and chief of the priest, which did so. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus, I know. And Paul, I know. Come on. But who are ye? Uh-huh. And the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them and overcame them and prevailed against them. So that they fled out of the house naked and wounded. You see that? If the spirit's not with you, you understand? God's not with you. That's a, it's one and the same. But that's just an example of what uh, Matthew 7 and 22 is going into. Now let's go back to Philippians 1 and 15. We'll read down a little bit. Read down just a little bit. The book of Philippians, chapter 1 and verse 15. Mm -hmm. Some indeed preach Christ even of envy and strife, and some also of good will. And some preach Christ of what? Good will. Good will, meaning what? They're sincere. There's no hidden agenda. They're not worried about uh, filthy, uh, filthy lucre. They're not trying to sleep with your wife. No, they're literally out here doing the will of God, which lets us know what? Christ will be preached regardless he set it up like that, whether it's from the evil or for the wicked, because at the end of the day, Christ is still being preached. Everybody understand that? Yes, sir. All right, read that part again. 
Verse 15. Come on. Some indeed preach Christ even of envy and strife. Some preach it of envy and strife. They're trying to outdo the next camp. They're trying to outdo the next man. But they themselves, they're not worried about actually applying what they're preaching. You understand? Read. And some also of goodwill. Uh-huh. The one preach Christ of contention, not sincerely. Not sincerely. All they want to do is beef like this is the Bloods and the Crips or something like that. They literally go out to the streets to start things with other Israelites. Read. Supposing to add affliction to my bonds. Add affliction to our bonds. Hey, isn't it hard enough that we got to battle against our enemies every day? But you, you say, oh, that's not good enough. No, you want to add affliction to my bonds by what? Now you're against me too. You see? That's what it's going into. Read. Verse 17. Come on. But the, but the other of love, knowing that I am set for the defense of the gospel. There's going, there are some true people out there that are set for the defense of the gospel. Meaning what? A lot of times you see leadership go over classes condemning certain doctrines because we are commanded to do so. For the defense of the gospel. Because you have some people preaching Christ, but they preach in multiple wives. We got to defend that thing. There's some people preaching Christ, teaching that the uh, Sabbath is on Sunday. We have to defend that thing. You understand that, right? All right, read. Verse 18. Come on. What then, notwithstanding every way, whether in pretense or in truth. It says, whether in pretense, meaning what? There's a hidden agenda. Whether in pretense, hidden agenda. There's some people that's going to come in here. They're not here for goodwill. 1 Corinthians 11 and 19, we go over it a lot, but it's, we got to let it sink in. A lot of people already come through those doors with something on their mind. Pretense. Okay, watch this. This is the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 19. Come on. For there must be also heresies among you. That's that pretense. All right, a heresy it, or a heretic is going against the doctrine that we teach, okay? So it says there must be heresies amongst you, meaning what? There's going to be some people with a pretense. You may call them spies, <laughs> you understand? Informants, wicked Negroes, they go by that name too, you understand? To make it plain so you can understand. Read it again. Verse 19. Come on. For there must be also heresies among you. Mm -hmm. Hey, that must, must. Must. So if there must be heresies amongst us, what does that mean? It's got to happen. So brothers, bruh, watch who you keep company with. Give me uh, Sirach real quick. Watch this. Sirach 11 and 33. Read that one first. I got another one. And then uh, Sirach 8 and 18. Read these two. Sirach Ecclesiasticus in the Apocrypha. Uh, we're doing chapter... Chapter 11, verse 33, and then, yeah, read 33 on down, and then um, Sirach 8 and 18 on down. The book of Sirach, chapter 11 and verse 33. Come on. Take heed of a mischievous man. The Bible says take heed. Don't let your guard down. And brothers, I'm going to let you in on something. It's called discernment. Hey, hey uh, does a thief... Make himself look like a thief? No, he don't. He make it look come. Hey, shalom, brother Most High Christ. Bless. You knew? Okay, man. Nice to meet you, man. Yeah, man. Um, tell me about yourself. You understand? That's how it goes. It's like casual. It's very really discreet to the point where this is a good brother or this is a good sister. That's what it looks like. Okay? Read. Take heed of a mischievous man. Uh-huh. For he worketh wickedness he worketh wickedness that's going into what pretense pretense he has a hidden agenda already read lest he bring upon thee a perpetual blot a perpetual blot meaning what what did we hear a few weeks ago in sabbath class what does the splc do to break up organizations what do they do um well then you hey, shalom lady shalom they um call confusion within the body, so they are seeing certain people just to um do their purpose. Just to do that purpose. And a lot of times, who do they go for? The leadership. They're going to go for the leader. You understand? They want to sneak in. They want to get close to anybody in leadership. Or 
They also do this too. They try to get in leadership so they can be what? Influential. Okay? Influential. But the thing about it, it's going to happen either way. The elect are going to understand it. And those who are supposed to get uh, sifted out of here, they're going to go. But as prophets, we got to do what? We got to defend the gospel. We have to teach this, even though it's still going to happen. Okay? Finish that off. Verse 34. Come on. Receive a stranger into thine house, mm -hmm. and he will disturb thee. He will disturb thee. Read. And turn thee out of thine own. And turn thee out of thine own. If you ain't careful, you thought everything was smooth. You've been in it three, four, five, six, seven years. Somebody brand new, after a year, you out, and they don't claim just spot. What happened there? We didn't apply the scripture. Okay? Read that in Sirach 8 and 18. The book of Sirach. Chapter 8 and verse 18. Come on. Do no secret thing before a stranger, mm -hmm. for thou knowest not what he will bring forth. You see? It says, do no secret thing, man. Hey, watch what you say and who you say it around. Watch what you say and who you say it around. Okay? Read it again. The book of Sirach, chapter 8 and verse 18. Come on. Do no secret thing. Before a stranger. Come on. For thou knowest not what he will bring forth. Uh-huh. Open not thine heart to every man. Right, right, right. Open not thy heart unto every man. Because some people, what? You can develop that relationship when you're like, I trust this brother. Then you just start pouring out everything about yourself. And once you do that, can you get it back? You can't get it back after that. It's, it happened. It's done. And that's all he was waiting for. That's why it says to do what? When you see, when you want to get a friend, you should do what? You got to prove them first, man. Sisters too. That's going into marriage. That's going, that's going in just in our um, relationship as brothers and sisters. We have to prove each other. Don't be so quick. Hey, you want to come to my house? What's wrong with you? No. You don't do that. Why would you invite somebody you, you don't even really know like that to your house? Nah. I'm going to let y'all in on a secret. A lot of people can't come to my house. But I love you. You understand what I'm saying? But I just apply the scriptures. Try the spirit. That's what the Bible says. All right, drop that. That's, that's, that's another class. Um, where were we at last? Philippians 1 and 15. Yeah, let's go back. Let's go back. Philippians chapter 1, verse 15. Well, that was going into pretense. So I don't want y'all to forget why we went to those precepts. All right. All right, read that. The book of Philippians, chapter 1 and verse 15. Mm -hmm. Some indeed preach Christ even of e envy and strife, and some also of goodwill. Mm -hmm. Then the one that, excuse me, verse 16. The one preach Christ of contention, not sincerely, supposing to add affliction to my bonds, mm -hmm. but the other of love, knowing that I am set for the defense of the gospel. Read. Verse 18. Come on. What then, notwithstanding every way, whether in pretense or in truth. Whether in pretense or in truth. Read. Christ is preached. You see that? Christ is preached. So at the end of the day, the Most High, he's going to be the one to get the glory, not man. So on you what? Even if you preaching it right, even if you got the right doctrine, it ain't about you. It's still not about you. You're nothing but a vessel or a tool or that sculpture that was formed in the creator's hand to do his will. That's all we are at the end of the day. Uh, go to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 1. And verse like 11, like Apollos and Paul. That's what I want. Yeah, start at 11. Start at 10. Start at 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 10. This is what was going on in Corinth. There was divisions talking about, man, Apollos, that's my teacher. That's my bishop. No, nah, no, nah, Paul, I like the way he break down the scriptures. Watch this, 1 Corinthians 1 and 10. The book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 1 and verse 10. Come on. Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord 
Jesus Christ, uh -huh. that ye all speak the same thing. Come on. And that there be no divisions among you. Read. But that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. Brothers and sisters, that's so important. I'm telling you, it's so important. If you see something that's contrary to what's being pushed, it is your duty according to the law, statutes, and commandments to do what? Say something. Say something because it's a commandment that we do what? All speak the same things. Now, if somebody has a question, ask your question so we can get it clarified so we can what? Be in the same mind. You understand that, right? All right, read on. Verse 11. Come on. For it hath been declared unto me of you, mm -hmm. my brethren, by them which are of the house of Chloe. Uh huh, Chloe. By the house of Chloe. That there are contentions among you. Meaning what? When Paul made his rounds, when he visited Corinth, the house of Chloe was like, Apostle Paul, this is what's going on in the camp. Telling the truth, right? Actually bringing it forth so it can be what? Resolved. So it can be resolved. Read. Verse 12. Come on. Now this I say, that every one of you saith, I am of Paul, mm -hmm. and I am of Apol Apollos. Apollos. Verse 12. Now this I say, that every one of you say it. I am of Paul, and I of Apollos, and I of Cephas, and I of Christ. Mm -hmm. Is Christ divided? Say, see that? Is Christ divided? No, Christ is not divided. Read. Was Paul crucified for you? Now is asking, is Paul Christ? That's what he's that's what he's saying right there. Is Paul Christ? No. Read. Or were ye baptized in the name of Paul? So he's speaking like like smart talk. You understand? Like smart Alec, okay? Read. Verse 14. I thank God that I baptized none of you, but Crispus and Gaius. Read. But Crispus and Gaius. Lest any should say that I had baptized in my own name. Now he's really being smart with him. Hey, if I would have actually baptized y'all, y'all would have said I was baptized in the name of Paul. Because y'all being that simple. That simple. To the fact where, hey, if, if Paul ain't saying it, I ain't listening. Or if, or, or if Apollos ain't saying it, I ain't listening. That's how simple they was getting. Okay? Read. Verse 16. Come on. And I baptized also the household of Stephanus. Besides, I know not whether I baptize any other. Mm -hmm. For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel. Read. Not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. You see that? Because Paul understood at the end of the day, it's Christ that's going to get glorified, not him. Now, give me 1 Corinthians 12. Give me 1 Corinthians 12. Uh, read down to uh, verse 3. The book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 12 and verse 1. Come on. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. Know ye, excuse me, ye know that ye were Gentiles carried away unto these dumb idols, even as ye were led. All right, who can explain that verse right there? Uh, Othenio. It was going into the um, Hellenized Jews and um, part part of the northern the northern kingdom that was um, living like Gentiles. Very good. Okay. All right. Read on. Verse three. Come on. Wherefore I give you to understand that no man speaking by the spirit of God called it Jesus accursed. It says no man speaking by the spirit of God called it Jesus accursed. Read. And that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord. But by the Holy Ghost. So showing you what? Whenever Christ is preached, you better believe that the Most High God had his hand in that. Whether it comes out of a wicked man's mouth or a righteous man's mouth. God saw fit for it to be preached. Okay? So when it comes to Matthew 7 and 22, many have prophesied in thy name. Those are going to what? Those doing it of envy, strife, pretense. And then when it says in Luke 9... Talking about Christ forbid them not. No, no, no. Hey, they doing the work too. Don't come. No. Nah. Just understand that my father in heaven, he had a hand in that thing. You understand that? All right, good. We used to scream black power 
while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.